what's up Rattlers? So a lot of you guys have asked me to do more turtle episodes. Well, here in Sydney, Australia, I'm at Turtles R Us with Arthur Weeding and he has some of the coolest native turtles from here in Australia. So if you like the content of this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there in the corner below. When you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Also check us out on Instagram, but for now, let's go check out these really awesome Australian turtles. I'm Dave Kaufman and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild. And while I'm at it, checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation and conservation. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. So Arthur, everybody has a story on how they got started with reptiles. Fill us in on what your story is. How did you get started with turtles and well, all of that stuff? G'day everybody, um, Sydney, Australia. Pretty much, um, yeah, I grew up with my grandparents and there was a canal that ran past the back of their property. And uh, so I had access to all the little creepy crawlies in, in, in uh, basically Sydney here. And uh, so from the creek, I used to bring home blue tongues and the odd python, oh, sorry, the odd snake, and uh, lots and lots of turtles. So I basically um, started with a few, and I was very, very passionate about turtles, and the hobby just grew. Fantastic. Um, and now you have Turtles R Us. Turtles and, R Us, yeah. And that's where we obviously are now. So how did Turtles R Us start? Well, pretty much after you um, you, you get passionate about turtles, I suppose it's like you know, coin, coin collection or stamp sure. collections, you, yeah. um, you start with a few, and uh, you get a few more, and then you breed a couple, and... Uh, then I got um, introduced to the Reptile Society probably back in the early 90s and um, I found out there was more people, which probably the common person calls us unusual, uh, that, that had interest in, in reptiles in general. Yeah, well we are unusual and we're very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so over here I see a whole enclosure full of side necks, which are my favorite Australian turtles. Let's check these guys out. So side neck turtles and long neck turtles, same thing, just different name. Yeah, the eastern long neck here, um, I find they're, they're uh, in, where I live, they're very, very common. Uh, when it rains, you'll find them on the side of the roads and yep. dams and creeks. Um, but yeah, I just basically thought that the common turtles was probably something that the public would be more interested in. So I, I, I've got oh, about 80 or so. Um, yeah, so I've got quite a large collection. We breed a, a couple of hundred every year, actually. A couple of hundred, wow. Yeah, well, if you're in New South Wales and pretty much up the eastern seaboard going up towards um, Queensland and, and right down through Victoria, um, these would be the more most common turtle the... that you'd, you'd run into for sure. It, it's an uh, unusual thing because um, being so common, um, people pick these up on the side of the road and if they're wild caught, they have a scent gland and they let out a terrible smell like a skunk. So the general public uh, didn't really uh, appreciate them. But right. If you breed them, they don't have that same gland and they don't have the fear factor. So uh, captive bred long necked turtles make great pets. Uh, very inquisitive, very interactive, and they'll actually swim up to you in the actual pond. So, no, very, very good turtle to start yeah. on, that's for sure. They certainly are friendly. And just look at how long that neck is. And they kind of fold that neck in half and bring the head back into the shell. Just incredibly unique turtles. From, from a, a pond aspect, uh, what, what I've recreated here, they normally will live in dams and not so much in rivers. Yeah. So what I've done with the, the pond here, I've got these large banks that basically go right down to the bottom of the pond, allowing the turtles to walk up up to, to the side of the pond instead of it having sheer straight sides. Um, the sand box or the dirt box is basically for laying of eggs and the far box over the far side there, uh, when they go into hibernation through winter, we filled it up with grass. Because um, the eastern long neck, probably about 80% of them will come out and hibernate outside of the box, outside of the pond, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And they'll go into the box through hibernation. Uh, these are a Queensland store shell, um, pretty much again found up the eastern seaboard, quite a common turtle. 
uh, pretty much start from about Lismore, which is around the, the top end of the New South Wales border, heading up towards basically heading north from there. Um, most of your, your coastal areas will have them. We found that the further you go north, uh, the bigger the animal gets. But yeah, very, very robust, tough animal. It's yeah. pretty much, um, uh, as a starter turtle, very, very, this is where you'd be starting. Very, very easy turtle to keep. Yeah. All right, and you're breeding these guys as well? Uh, yeah, we. this is probably the turtle that um, I've enjoyed the most in, in collecting and keeping. Um, I would probably be the largest breeder of Queensland store shells in New South Wales for sure because it's my my personal choice as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can see why. It, it was different. Uh, as I grew up, the common long neck and the Macquarie were quite common. And uh, once I learned about this fella right here, I, I, was, I was very interested in this guy. Yeah, definitely. They just have big bulky heads. I just love it. The females are about um, about a third, if maybe if not even half the size bigger of a male. They come in a few variation of colours. This guy would be quite quite dark. It's virtually near enough to black. And they come to a uh, sort of a timber motley colour as well into brown through to a fawn. There's there's very uh, there's a lot of variation in colour in these guys. Wow. Okay, this is Australia's um, probably smallest turtle that's kept in in the pet as a pet. Um, it's a Macquay River turtle. It's found about five hours north from where I am here in uh, Sydney. And this would be, uh, this is a male turtle. Um, these turtles are, are very interesting to be able, basically be able to keep in the pet trade because of the sheer size. This is a full size male. The animal in general is no more than about 160 millimeters, sorry, 160 millimeters long to yep. 180 millimeters long. The females are a little bit bigger, but in general terms, because of the, they're so small, um, they're a really, really good turtle to be kept in a fish tank. They're part of the Macquarie family. Um, but yeah, not as common, but becoming more common in the, in the pet, uh, pet industry now, or the pet trade in general. Yeah. Okay, this is another short neck uh, turtle. It's the uh, Queensland Crep. The way you can really get the best distinction between the two of them is the yellow line on the face, uh, right up behind the eye. It tells you it's a Queensland short neck turtle. Um, not as common here in, in Sydney, but um, more, more and more breeders are getting them because of the, the amount of babies that we breed. Um, so they will become common and, and be kept outside. They're, they're quite, as, quite easy, just like another, another short neck really. There's no problems in keeping them. But they're a pretty turtle. They, they seem to have that softer appearance on the face by having yellow lines there. Yeah, they really are pretty turtles. So in the United States, we have a very common species of turtle called a painted turtle, and they're just beautiful, but Australia has its own version of painted turtles. Yeah, this is the painted turtles that we have in Australia. Um, I've seen the turtles that you've got in the States with the dark reds and the high, high, high colors you've got. Yeah. Um, sadly, there is very few of those here. Uh, what we do have is our painted turtles, which don't really have the high red, but they're more of an orangey uh, sort of colour through. Um, where we, uh, not, not an animal that's really kept in captivity on, on large numbers, we're sort of quite new with it. Sure. Um, but again, it's um, once you've been in turtles for a few years, this would, would, would be one of your trophy turtles that uh, you'd probably want to move into. Um, it would be nice if we can get some of those nice colours out of the state into Australia, but um, the laws won't allow that, will it? Import-export laws in Australia, yeah? That's correct. You can only work with native species. Maybe one day that'll change, but until now... We'll just have to keep breeding our own. That's right. Okay, this is the common Macquarie, short neck turtle. Um, this will probably be the, the most common turtle probably kept in captivity alongside with the, uh, the long neck turtle. Um, in in the, uh, the pet shops in general, uh, this is the animal that would be sold mostly. Uh, very common, very common in any river up and down the eastern seaboard, across the other side of the Great Dividing Range. They vary in size. Uh, this is probably one of the smaller ones, but you can get these up to about three to four hundred millimeters long. Really? So as far as them being kept in uh, fish tanks, um, people will purchase them from the shop and they're not realizing they've bought such a big animal and have to move them to a pond or take them back to the pet shop. And what is the basic care for a turtle like this? Pretty much, um, uh, from the the adult sized turtle, from a sub adult to the adult sized turtle, the, the care outside is minimal. Um, as long as the quality of the water is kept clean um, and ample food. Because if you do keep a large number of turtles and you don't have ample food, uh, you'll have issues of dominance and uh, one turtle will uh, pick on the other. Sure. Such. So, what are you feeding them? Just regular cat food? 
Yeah, I feed them, I feed them cat biscuits because I find that then the, the uh, minerals and all, all the vitamins and everything else in the cat biscuit. Um, we feed them chicken, heart, kidney and liver as a meat substance and uh, raw fish. The cleanliness of water is the, the most important thing um, because turtles do live in water. That it basically goes throughout the whole system. So if you've got um, hygiene issues with your water, then you'll end up with uh, shell rot and other issues as right. well as the turtles' welfare. So here's the filtration system for this. How did you set this up? Okay, well, pretty, pretty much having a, uh, a sort of a fish, a bit of knowledge about fish in general, with fish tanks and stuff like that. Uh, what I found was that um, with turtles, you have a lot of bi, bi matter with uh, urine and feces and, and excess food. So obviously everything had to get bigger as well. Yeah. So what I pretty much did, I, I've recreated these myself. So I just basically got these plastic 44 gallon drums, which they bring food in from um, other parts of the world into Australia. And uh, what we do, we, we've basically got, this is bird netting. So it's what you put over your, your tree to protect your fruit from bats and birds ah, and stuff. Ah, sure. So uh, there's a cavity in the bottom of the blue drum where the water comes into the blue drum. There's a, a, a plastic crate in there, which basically gives an area of about six inches in the bottom of the drum. And then we fill it up with these, this netting. So all the matter of water, it, it basically sifts through the netting, catching about 80% of the mass. And then it basically pours into the next drum and then recycles back. By leaving pumps running 24 hours a day, when you're catching out 50, 60, 70% of the matter all the time, yeah. you end up keeping your ponds very clean. And the good thing about it is that when the, um, the throughput of the water slows down, all you do is you stop the valves, which are down at the bottom here, on these valves here. Yeah. We just basically close off these valves, which stops the water entering the drum. We open up this valve here, which then allows the water to basically siphon out of the drums and leaves all the mass and grub on mess on the floor. Wow. That's pretty cool. So it goes from here into this reservoir. And then back to the pond. And then and all much. the way back up to the pond here. That's the cleanliness of the water. Oh, there you go. So, yeah. It looks clean enough to drink. All right, Rattlers, so that's some of the adult turtles that Arthur keeps out here, but right in this room are all the really cool little babies. I just love baby turtles, and he has tons of them in here. So pretty much um, the adult turtles are all kept outside in large ponds. Uh, most of the ponds are about 10,000 litres of water. Um, if you keep lots of animals in general, whether they're turtles, dogs, cats or snakes, you end up with uh, obviously a, a byproduct, which is the baby turtle. Sure. Um, over the years, um, I, I've just basically, my hobby in general has grew and grew and I found it hard to get um, good information because probably I was at the, the end of having probably a, the largest collection of turtles. So. It's been a lot of trial and error. Um, so what I do now here at Turtles R Us, I try to make sure that all the information and knowledge that we've got is uh, filtered out through anybody who basically uh, requires a, or uh, basically gets a baby turtle. Sure. Um, yeah, they, get, they go home with care sheets and uh, all the information, phone, uh, phone numbers and emails. So yeah, you don't have to understand everything that I know, but any issues or concerns that you've got, we can run you through it. That's fantastic. All right, so let's start with these little guys right here. Yeah, these are baby McClays, uh, as I showed you outside, the Australian smallest turtle. Um, becoming quite common now because people like myself who are breeding a, a fair number of them, um, but they're a shy turtle. Uh, most people would probably still be starting with a, a saw shell, a long neck or a Macquarie as their first turtle, basically to understand their needs and wants. But yeah, as a secondary turtle, I highly recommend the McClay being so small and needs to be kept in a, a glass of room. Okay, in Australia now, if you're going to keep a reptile or native fauna in general, through National Parks and Wildlife, you'll need a Class 1 reptile license. Uh, that allows you to keep basically all the common turtles that we breed here. Um, or there's other, other animals that you can also keep on a Class 1 license, but you do need a reptile Class 1 license. 
And how easy is it to get a class one? Pretty much now it's, it's just an email or a phone call to National Parks and a small fee. And then they'll put you in contact with some breeders. Uh, it's pretty easy to get. So it's yeah. pretty easy to get. Okay. All right. So if I know a herp room, that has got to be an incubator. Yeah. Well, pretty much um, when you obviously breed snakes, you get lots of snakes or lots of turtles. The incubator has to get big as well. So I ran out of refrigerators, um, so I built my own incubator. And it's got a double glazed glass door. Look at that. So how many eggs do you have in here currently? Uh, we probably have about 800 eggs in there at the moment. 800 turtle eggs in here. And so in Australia, when do they usually lay and when do they usually hatch? Pretty much most species will start to actually lay their eggs from about the beginning of November, right through to about the end of March. Um, some female turtles will double clutch, but in general terms, yeah, pretty much in that five, six months window there. Which is the Australian summer. It's not Australian summer, that's correct. Yep, yep. What we found was that with the incubating of turtles, um, there just was nothing on a, um, a scale that I needed here in Australia. So I pretty much um, went to different people that bred uh, tree pythons and, and uh, that sort of any animal that had high humidity. And we came up with a simple idea and basically what it was was a plastic tub and a peg basket. And what we do, we basically put a, a volume of water in the bottom of the peg, peg basket. Then we put the little plastic container on top of here with vermiculite and the turtle eggs. We close it off with a lid and then they go straight back into the incubator. And how long is uh, incubation? Pretty much the incubator is um, very, basically from the clay about 50 days. 50 days, okay. The long necks would be the longest of about 80, 85 days. Gotcha. We like to keep our temperature between 28 and 30 degrees. And we like our humidity between 90 and 95%. Okay, well pretty much after they come out of the incubator, uh, what we found here at Turtles R Us was that the biggest killer of baby turtles was they drowned. So if you put baby turtles into 10, 20 inches of water with no uh, no weed or no turtle dock or nothing along those sort of areas, uh, baby turtles over a week were drowning. So oh, what wow. we ended up doing was that um, we keep our turtles now in a very, very low volume of water and we bank up our limestone for calcification and hardening of the water. So we keep our baby turtles in these shallow tanks for about six to eight weeks. And by that way there, because we're coming straight from an incubator, that allows you then to move the, um, the more active turtles along in the process and uh, procedure and uh, the turtles that ain't um, as active, we can keep them back and then they can get more food and we can basically get them for sure. the procedure. Yep, so pretty much uh, after the baby turtles are kept in a small volume of water for about six to eight weeks, we then move them up to these top tanks which have about four inches of water in them. Turtles in here will stay here for an additional three to four weeks. And then from here we know the turtles are active, they're healthy, they're eating and are capable of swimming. No problems at all of holding a breath as well. So they're fine then to move on to what we call the turtles where you can come along and you can purchase a turtle uh, to take the pet home. We know that then you have a strong, healthy animal that uh, has no other issues. That's fantastic. All right, so real quick. So these are the Maclays that we saw. What in Australian dollars would a baby Maclays cost? A baby Maclay, uh, a baby McClay four or five years ago were about $150 per turtle. But uh, as more people keep them and more people are starting to breed them as well, it's, it's uh, like anything else, that becomes a, a price issue. So sure. at the moment now in Australia, a baby McClay sells for between $90 to $100. $90 to $100, okay. Back in this room where we first started, those are baby turtles down here. Then they graduate up to these tanks up here and then when they get a little older, they come in this room here. So how old are the turtles in this room? The turtles in this room would be anywhere between uh, 10, 10 weeks plus. 10 weeks plus, okay. Um, there's a little bit of variation and because we've there's so many turtles coming out and variations of batches and clutches, sometimes the uh, the animals that are more advanced and eating, they'll, they'll proceed quicker than their, maybe their brother or sure. sister or such. But yeah, they're pretty much anywhere between 10, 10, 12, 14 weeks year, year old here. Um, and basically from this room here, yeah, they can go, go to someone's home as a pet. Nice. So elsewhere in the world, turtle morphs are getting to be more and more popular, but with the limited amount of turtles that you can work with here in Australia, simply because of the import-export laws in Australia, are there any morphs that are coming out in the Australian species of turtles? Uh, this year would be the first year in about 25 years of breeding turtles that I've been lucky enough to have one. You actually got a morph, all right. I've got one. <laughs> 
Now this little guy here is probably going to take me the best part of five to seven years to get it up to a size where it's a, a breedable animal. But this is a little baby Macquarie, so it should be a very dark brown in colour. And you can see that um, I've got just the one. Just the one. Here, I'm going to take a yep, look sure. here. Look at that, guys. Wow, so congratulations on that. That is amazing. You know, breeding... So how many of these do you usually breed? Of this particular species, we could probably get anywhere between 80 to 200 a year. 80 to 200 a year. So you do that every single year, and eventually something awesome is going to pop up. Eventually you might get one. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> that is fantastic. So, Rattlers, we've talked in the past about how difficult it is sometimes to be an Australian herper because of the laws that are in place. There's no import, there's no export, there's certain laws that pertain to caging and what you actually can keep based on what state you live in here in Australia. And what I saw here at Turtles R Us is a testament to just how awesome a reptile collection can be here in Australia. So, Rattlers, here's where I want to hear from you guys. Comment below, let me know that if you could only keep Australian native species, what would you keep? Would you keep one of these turtles here? Or would you keep one of the pythons? What would you keep if you could only keep Australian native species? So there's a lot more adventures coming from here in Australia. So until the next time, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.